Hi everybody, my name is Vicki Van Sickle and I am the author of If I Had a Griffin. This is my very first picture book. It was illustrated by Kale Atkinson. And what I thought I would do today, I'm gonna to tell you a little bit about where I got the idea for the book. And then I have an activity I'm going to share with you. And then I thought we'd read the story together. So people ask me all the time where my ideas come from and they come from everywhere. I'm really inspired by other books, movies, stories that I hear, things that I see on my walks. And ideas can come from anywhere pretty much. And for this one, I knew that I wanted to write an animal story. I love animals and I love pets. And I also love magic and mythology and folklore. And I used to work in a bookstore and I was at a story time there and the kids in the story time were very interested in Harry Potter, but I didn't have enough time to read it. And they were a little bit younger than I think the average Harry Potter reader was. So I thought I should find a picture book for all these kids who wanna learn about magical animals and witches and wizards. And I found a lot of books about dragons and a lot of books about unicorns, but there weren't any books about hippogriffs, for example, or griffins. And so I thought maybe I can be the person to write that book. So the first thing I did is I made a list of all the magical creatures I could think of. And then I did some research and I went to the internet and I read books and I had a huge long list of even more magical or mythological creatures. And do you know how many animals I had on my list? Do you want to guess? 86. Now, do you think there are 86 animals in this book? No, there are a lot, but there are not 86. So then I had to sort of think about what did I want to do with this list of animals? Just a list of animals isn't all that interesting. So I started to think about what it would be like if these animals were my pets and I had to look after them. Because when you have a pet at home, you have responsibilities. So you might have to take your dog for a walk. You might need to clean the shavings out of a hamster cage. You want to make sure they have fresh food and water. You have to pick up the poop, poop and scoop, not a fun job, but a very important one. So I started to think about all the chores you do for pets. And then I thought, how would those chores change or be different if they were magical pets? And that is where the story came from for If I Had a Griffin. So I'm gonna show you a few clues to some of the animals in the book because they might be new to you. And then we're done looking at the clues. We'll read through the story and see if any of those clues match with the animals in the book. Does that make sense? All right, clue number one, here we go. All right, so what do we have here? This is a feather, that's right. And what kind of animals usually have feathers? Birds, animals with wings, that's right. So we know that at least one creature in this book is going to have feathers or wings. So that is our first clue. For our second clue, Oh, I need two hands for this one, it's a big one. All right, here is our second clue. Take a good look at it. Now I know it looks a little bit like driftwood or a stick or something you might find on your walk in the woods, but imagine I had two of them and they were coming out of the side of my hat. What would I call these? Antlers, that's right, like you would find on a moose or reindeer or a caribou. So one of our creatures is going to have antlers. I'm gonna put this one down over here where it's safe. Clue number three. Here we go. Now, I, I wish you were here with me so you could feel how soft this is. What does this look like to you? It could be hair, like hair on a horse, or fur, that's right. It looks a little bit like raccoon fur. I know a lot about raccoons. There's a raccoon that likes to come visit me in the backyard. So we know that one of our animals is going to have fur or hair, so we'll keep that in mind. Clue number four. Oh, this is my favorite clue. So take, oh, it jumped right out of my hands. There we go. Now, this has sort of the shape of a banana, doesn't it? And if you look at it like this, maybe you think of one thing. It looks a bit like a tooth or a tusk like from a walrus, or maybe even a claw or a talon like on a really big bird or like a saber tooth tiger. But if I turn it like this, maybe you think it's something else. Could be a horn, if you have two of them, like a bull or a cow, or maybe it's a unicorn horn, a little baby unicorn. So the reason I like this clue is when you look at it different ways, you get different ideas. So this is our second last clue. We have one more left. Let me see if I can find it. Aha, here we go. This is a starfish or a sea star. And where do you normally find starfish? 
in the ocean, that's right, or at the aquarium where they have sea creatures. So this is a sign that at least one of our creatures comes from the sea. So now we've seen our clues, so we're gonna keep those clues in mind as we go through the story, and maybe we can figure out where they come from. So again, this book is called If I Had a Griffin. It was written by me, Vicki Van Sickle, and illustrated by Kale Atkinson. Now this is a very special copy because this is the copy. So Kale did this illustration for me. So this is the book we worked on together and he wrote this very special message for me. So this is a very special copy of the book. If I Had a Griffin. Last week I got a hamster, my first and only pet. He mostly eats and sleeps and hides and gets his shavings wet. He's not a very exciting looking pet, is he? If only I could have a pet with strange exotic powers, I know that I'd find lots to do to while away the hours. So there she is, having some tea, reading her book, what kind of animal is on that mug? It's a narwhal, that's right. She's dreaming about all these different creatures. Do you think our hamster's happy about that? I don't think so. If I had a unicorn, I'd braid her silky mane. I'd make her silver horseshoes that tinkled in the rain. We'd prance through fields of posies and nibble nectarines. I'd shine her horn with candy corn to get a starry sheen. What do you notice about the words in this book? What do you notice about the sound? They rhyme, that's right. I love rhyme. Unicorns are pretty, but they're also very shy. On second thought, I'd like to give a hippogriff a try. Now imagine you get a unicorn and you invite all your friends to come and visit and then he hides under the bed and all they see is a sparkly unicorn bum. You'd be pretty disappointed, wouldn't you? A hippogriff need lots to do, like run and jump and fetch. I'd take him to the dog park to give his wings a stretch. Now hippogriff looks pretty happy about that. Well, what about those dogs? They're not quite so sure. Though Hippogriff is tons of fun, the dogs might find him scary. And when it comes to playing ball, well, things could get quite hairy. Poor Hippogriff, what game does he want to play? Soccer, that's right. Now, if you look closely at that Hippogriff, do we have one of our clues that could go with him? Maybe the feather, that's right. Perhaps I'll get a Sasquatch with Furly, curly fur. But then I'd spend three hours a day attacking snarls and furs. Now take a close look at that Sasquatch. What are some of the things you see stuck in his fur? I see a bed and a dog. What about over there? There's a bicycle and a lamppost. And right up there at the top, there is Sam. There's our narrator. And that teeny tiny thing in her hand, that is a comb. It's gonna take her a long time to comb through that Sasquatch's hair. Now, do any of our clues go with Sasquatch? Take a good look at him. Maybe the horn could be his horn, that's right. Or the fur. The fur looks like it's about the same texture and color, doesn't it? If I had a griffin, I'd love each flashing feather. But she needs flying every day, regardless of the weather. So even on a storm, you gotta fly your griffin. If I had a kraken, I'd swim and deep sea dive, but I would need a scuba suit in order to survive. Now that's a very big creature. If you look over here on this page, what's that animal? That's a whale. And look at how tiny it is compared to this big kraken. Which of our creatures goes with the sea monster, the kraken? starfish that's right if i had a dragon with the temperamental snout i'd need a fire extinguisher to put her sneezes out what happens if a dragon sneezes fire that's right K 
Karen needs a field of grass at least an ocean wide. Jackalope needs sturdy reins for bumpy, jumpy rides. Now these are two very different creatures. So there's the jackalope and there's the Karen. But what do they have in common? What's something that they both share? The antlers, that's right. Our clue the antler goes with both of those creatures. Phoenix needs a chimney nest that's smoke and fireproof. Manticore needs special floss for each and every tooth. Ooh, that looks like a smelly job, doesn't it? Now, if you look closely at that manticore, a lot of our clues could go here. So we could use the fur for the mane, or the horn, or possibly the tooth, right? And what about the phoenix? Before the phoenix bursts into flame, what is a phoenix made out of? Feathers, so the feather could go there too. Harpies are too screechy. Chupacabra likes to bite. Fairies play too many tricks and Kelpies hate the light. Basilisk is slippery. Chimera likes to scratch. Mermaids brush their hair all day and sprites are hard to catch. That's a lot of magical creatures. I don't know about you, but I'd get pretty tired if I was looking after all of those creatures. Perhaps a hamster's not so bad. In fact, he's rather sweet. I love his furry belly and his teeny tiny feet. He may not be a griffin or a creature from the sea, but I am his and he is mine, and that's enough for me. I mean, he's a cute little hamster, right? You wouldn't mind having a pet like that. Now, Look very closely at that last page. What's different about that hamster than other hamsters you may know? Do you know hamsters with antlers? Or what about wings? Do you think that when Sam turns around, she's gonna realize that her hamster has antlers and wings? Me neither. So that is the story of If I Had a Griffin. Before we go today, there's one thing I wanted to show you which is kind of special. So on this book, this is a hardcover book and it has a paper dust jacket. And we call this a dust jacket because it keeps the dust out of the book the way that a jacket that you wear would keep dirt off your clothing. And normally when you take off a dust jacket, the book underneath looks exactly the same. It has the same words, but sometimes there's something a little bit special. And this one has something a little bit special. So before I show you what's underneath the dust jacket, take a good look at the cover figure out where the animals are, what the words say, and here's the back. Now, is there anything interesting or different or gives you pause about that back cover? Now, if you give me a drum roll, I'm gonna take off this dust jacket. Excellent drum roll. And here we are. So this is the book under the dust jacket. You can see it still says, if I had a griffin, and there's my name and there's Kale's name. But this book is very different. It's green. It looks like it's made out of scales. It looks like there's been a big scratch there, like something's gotten at it. And on the back, what's this? It looks a bit like a scorch mark, doesn't it? So this book is very different than the dust jacket cover. But we have seen this book before. Does anyone remember in the story where we might have seen this book? Give you a second and I'm gonna find it for you. So you might remember when Sam was imagining all the magical creatures, she was reading a green book with scales. Well, that looks sort of like this one, doesn't it? In fact, it's exactly the same. So that is a fun little treat that you now know about if I had a griffin. I'm so glad you were able to join me today. I have another picture book out if you like picture books. It's called Teddy Bear of the Year. Here it is right there. And this is about a teddy bear's picnic, which is something that I've always wanted to go to. So thank you again for joining me. Thank you for your guesses. Again, I'm Vicki Van Sickle. I'm the author of If I Had a Griffin, and I hope you're enjoying reading and creating, and I hope you have a wonderful day.